A new month, a new request. Let's check out what we're building in this month's Budget Builds Monthly episode. Before we get into it, I want to give a quick insight as to what we do for this series. We take your budget and answers from a request form. In the video description, there is a link to a Google form. It slowly gets updated every so often. With this information, we try to build the best computer we can to fit your means. Unless there are budget constraints, we spec out systems on AMD and Intel, both using their DDR4 and DDR5 Gen platforms. Once the build lists are complete, we compare each build using online benchmarks and list out the pros and cons between the top builds from the benchmarks. Using those, then we can determine what build is the best for your use case. But we can't do any of that without your input. Speaking of the Google form, let's see how you fill it out. Just in case you forgot or you're new to the channel, here's how we fill out the budget builds request form. Now, budget builds do not include taxes, fees, or windows keys, unless stated otherwise. We do not collect your Google information. Just don't worry about that. You don't have to sign in. Budgets are in USD. Now you can select your type of system, whether you want gaming, working, or combination of the two. Form factor preferences, this will determine what case we go with. So if you go for a mini ITX, then we'll go with a mini ITX case. Or if you go for ATX, then we'll go for at least an ATX case. Now you can let us know down in the comments at the end of this if you want a mini ITX board with a full ATX case, but we'll get there when we get there. Next up is CPU and GPU preferences. If you want an Intel CPU, AMD CPU, NVIDIA GPU, AMD GPU, other preferences, or no preference at all. Now here's your area of focus. Now these are in hierarchical format. So if you want us to focus on your CPU first, I would put focus first here and then second, third, all the way to focus last. So if we have any money left over in your budget or we can shift things around, we'll start in this order and work our way to the end. Now, if you don't care about anything like your case or your power supply or things like that, or your memory, you can either put these at the end or just say focus last and we'll move on from there. Now, if you already purchased or own any system components you wanna use in this next system, just put them in the format of, let's say, storage, 500 gigabyte, and then if it's an M.2 SSD, a SATA SSD, whatever it is, there's no sense into buying two cases or a double power supply if you already have it. Now, any peripherals you want, a mouse, keyboard, a monitor, headset, or pretty much anything you want, just put here in this other category or just select it and we'll add it into the build. Now, any other request you can put here, like if you want RGB, no RGB, again, any other request, just put in this bottom here. Quick disclaimer, prices will vary if any sales are going on or stock changes at the time of recording. Because of this, we tried to get the budget builds as close or slightly over the stated budget. Unless asked, we are not including taxes, shipping costs, OS keys, or peripherals in the final cost from the budget. And here's the user's request. They have a budget of 1000 USD for a gaming type of system, no form factor preference, no CPU GPU preferences, Areas of Focus wants us to be CPU, memory, storage, and graphics card. They have an RTX 4070. Need a monitor. Didn't specify what kind, but don't worry, we'll cover that. And then just have a request of RGB. Now, most of this stuff nowadays does come with RGB already on it, so we won't have to worry about that too much. So now let me know what the user wants. Here's a small template built out of what they have and what they want. The user has an RTX 4070, so we just picked this one from Gigabyte as a placeholder made sure they were all listed as purchased with a $0 price, so we don't have to worry about subtracting it later on. Now we picked a 1440p monitor as this pairs well with that RTX 4070. You can find these for $160 to $200 USD, and we picked the $200 one as you can always just get the less expensive one and change the price later on. And then we took our template, upgraded it, added a PCIe 4.0x4 NVMe SSD. This is a crucial P3 Plus 1 terabyte. We have our RTX 4070, for our case, we went with a nice mid-tower case. This is a placeholder, so it's all up to the user. And then we made sure we have at least 750 watts of power supply just for some headroom when it comes to building out these systems. And then, of course, we have our placeholder of a 1440p monitor. Now that we have our general upgraded template, let's see what kind of systems we can build. Starting out with our AM4. Went with the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. This is an 8 core, 16 thread, 3 gigahertz boosting to 4.1. For our CPU cooler, went with the Thermal Wright Peerless Assassin. 
This was actually pretty good according to Reddit and other users. So we decided to go for that and our CPU cooler. You can go with something else, choice is up to you. For our motherboard, we went with the MSI Mag B550 Tomahawk. This does have RGB at the user's request, as well as a few other key features. For our memory, we went with the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro, again on the RGB path. This is a 16 gig kit of DDR4 3600CL18. We have that crucial P3 Plus, but we also added a Kingston NV2, another one terabyte SSD. So I got that same RTX 4070, that same case power supply and monitor from before, sitting right around $895.53. So we're sitting right around $105 under our $1,000 budget. Now, this isn't the most expensive CPU, as well as the one with the most cores and threads. And because it's a gaming system and not a working in gaming system, we did sacrifice some cores for better overall performance from them. So you might see this as, why didn't we go for something like a 5950X? Because the overall performance in the cores and threads was actually better off with the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. Moving on to our Intel build, For our Intel DDR4 build, we went with the i7-13700K. This is a 16 core, 24 thread, 3.4 gigahertz boosting to 5.4. For our CPU cooler, we upgraded it to an Arctic Liquid Freezer 3. This is a 240 millimeter AIO. For our motherboard, we went with the MSI Mag B760 Tomahawk. This is a Wi-Fi LGA1700 motherboard. We have that same Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro from before. Now this might seem a little interesting, but this time we went with two Crucial P3s. We still have our Crucial P3 Plus, but we also went with a Crucial P3 1TB. This and the NV2 from Kingston, they're kind of interchangeable. It doesn't really matter based on the price point, but just extra terabyte of storage. And then we got that same placeholder case, power supply and monitor sitting right around $99 or around $10 under our budget. And then for AM5, we have the Ryzen 5 9600X. It's a 6 core, 12 thread, 3.9 gigahertz boosting to 5.4. The Scythe Mugen 6 is supposedly a good CPU cooler for this, stated on Reddit, so can't go wrong with that. For a motherboard, we have the Gigabyte B560. This is an ATX AM5 motherboard. For our memory, we went the Team Group T Force Delta. It's an RGB 32 gig kit of DDR5 6000 CL30. And then everything else pretty much below that stays the same from our template build sitting right around $2 under our budget. And then finally, we have our Intel DDR5. We went with the i7-13700K, same one as before. 16 cores, 24 threads, 3.4 gigahertz boostings for 5.4. We got that same Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 as our previous Intel build. Went with the MSI B760. It's a Gaming Plus Wi-Fi ATX LG 1700 motherboard. I believe it does still have RGB. And then that same team group 32 gig kit of DDR5 6000 CL30. And then we got that same storage video card case power supply and monitor as our template sitting right around $14 under our budget. Before we get into CPU testing, let's see what kind of bundled deals we can get to then finalize our CPUs and test them out. Hopping over to Micro Center, we have a budget of $537. If we're going to go up a little bit, which we might as well, we can get a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, an ASUS Tough Gaming B650E, and 32GB of DDR5 for $550. We are going to take this, make sure we compare to it. We're also going to take our Ryzen 7 9700X and compare that to our Ryzen 5 9600X. So we'll just take both of them and see which ones we're going to build out. Now, if we take our Intel DDR5 and that same price budget of 504 USD, we can get an i7-14700K, an ASUS Z790, and 30 gigabytes of DDR5 for $500 USD. Now, there are a bunch of systems here we can actually build out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our 14700K, our 13700K, which I believe the 14700K is gonna be better, as well as our 9600X, a 7800X 3D, and a 9700X. And we're gonna compare all of our CPUs in a gaming standpoint. And then we're gonna choose an overall system the user should build. And that will pretty much be it. So let's get into CPU testing and finalize this build out. 
All right, so before we get into the YouTube gaming session, I just wanted to bring up all of our CPUs here and show the current CPU mark performance in percentages. So here on the left, we have our 14700K on Micro Center. Then we have our i7 13700K on our DDR4 and DDR5 Intel build. We have our Ryzen 7 9700X, our Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, which you can get on both Micro Center. And then we have our Ryzen 5 9600X, which we have on our build. So overall Intel performance, I would say go for the 14700K, especially because it is in that price range of bundle deals with Micro Center. If you're going to go AMD, I would either go for the Ryzen 7 9700X or 7800X 3D. Now, if we're talking about gaming performance immediately, I would go for the 7800X 3D because we have 3D vCache. So overall performance, we're going to see if we can get some footage of all of these CPUs being tested and then finalize. But currently, I would say get the Ryzen 7 7700X 3D or get the 14700K. All right, so let's get into the actual testing and then finalize your build from that. Tom's Hardware has a chart here of everything in 1080p with an RTX 4090. 4090 doesn't really matter because we're still doing that overall performance. The only thing that's not in this list is our Ryzen 5 9600X, and that is because it pretty much like just came out this year, so it's probably not going to be in most lists, but we'll see if we can find it. At the top here is our Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. Scrolling down, we have our i7 14700K, then our 13700K to below that, and then lower down, we have all of our other AMD CPUs. So overall performance, that 7800X 3D is your best thing to do. Now, if we go back to Tom's hardware, scroll down, here are our CPUs, the gaming's performance overall, and the architecture that it's on. Of course, the cores and threads, boost clocks, everything's pretty much here. And then we'll pretty much just go down this list. So our 7800X 3D, 100 all the way, 14900K, 14700K, and then of course it just goes lower and lower all the way through down a single thread cpu performance this is where the more cores are going to come in as the 13700k is at 90.8 our 7800x 3d is kind of closer to the bottom all the way down here at 74 percent but i mean it's single threaded cpu benchmarks rating we're here for gaming performance, not really as a workstation. And then for multi-threaded CPU performance, it's pretty much up there at more at 10%. And that pretty much covers everything. Uh, we'll see if we can get some gaming performance between our Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and that 14700K. And then we'll uh, build out our systems with that. I still think that Ryzen 7 7800X 3D build from Micro Center is worth that extra money. You're going to have a heck of a good time playing 1440p games with that system. So our clear winner, if you're going to build from Micro Center, will be this Ryzen 7 7800X 3D build. Just do it in place of this Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. And then our technical second winner will be this i7 13700K. Just don't forget to go to Micro Center again and buy the 14700K in place of the 13700K. Now, before I end the video, I just wanted to say that there is no reason to buy anything used except maybe a PC case as the bundle deals are where the performance to price is. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Fill out that Google form and I'll see you all in the next one.